feels like the man show moved on to onto YouTube without the uh, girls jumping on trampolines. I'm, I'm hoping one day he gets girls jumping on trampolines. Um, a lot of different <laughs> like um, things that I had to research for guns and stuff like that. I got it from him. Like I said, never, you know, I, I, I know guns. I love guns. But, you know, when it comes to actual, like, gun combat, hey, I've never been shot at, thank goodness. And I've only had to drop my gun one time, okay? For a coon, you know? You snuck whoa, up on whoa, me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> raccoon came out oh, of the garage, okay. came at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so other than that, you know, you know. I watched, uh, I watched. Of course, of course, with my wife, she did have to pull her gun on somebody. Really? Yeah, yeah, Lacey did, yeah. Lacey's scary, honestly. Yeah, uh, well, uh, it was a road rage situation. Someone was very mad and, you know, came up to her car, was walking up to her car, and she's, you know, scared white woman. Right. She's like, well, this is how it's going down. I'm John <laughs> first. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. I know, right? It was over a burrito. Shut up. She almost got murked over a burrito? Well, they were going to Cadoba. So it was even like a good burrito. Oh, She's, it yeah, was in the, it wasn't in even Cadoba. Chipotle. Yeah, C- yeah, it was a Cadoba parking lot, you know. So fun times, though. Fun times. Uh, oh, this is disappointing. This is disappointing. I want to stream Twitch. No, because that's not <laughs> what I advertise. <laughs> so irritated. Sorry. Not at you. I you know. didn't do it. I know. I'm just saying sorry, and I wish I could help you with your setup, but a lot of Apple products here. And I got hammers. You got hammers. Thank you. Uh, we'll just fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. I wanted to finish that joke, but, you know, I don't know who's listening. All right. Because when you, because you say the hammer... You actually you guys finished the Captain uh, Hammer joke? Fuck it, we'll do it live. All you right, you have no we're... idea who Captain Hammer is, do you? Uh, no, not it. Not a... Harry, you and I live in two different worlds. Here's what you don't understand. I don't know what half of what you ever say is. Like, I love you, and you are one of my... You are, like, top three best friends at this point in my life. Yeah, top three. Uh, but I don't know what the fuck you're ever talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got my autism putty all over my show prep. Oh. Well, brand autism putty. Uh, this. <laughs> I'm, I've got a sinus infection, and I don't feel well, and I'm grumpy, and it's going to be one of those shows. By sinus infection, he means... Uh... <laughs> my pussy's infected, is that what you're saying? Are you calling me less of a man because my sinus is clogged? <laughs> I have sensitive sinuses because of ten years of Afrin abuse, Harry. You gotta, know this. Gotta, yeah, that's what I'm trying to think about buying you that car humidifier for your for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have to be bleeding on women. It's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to bring that up. Uh, just an occasional nosebleed when you're making out with somebody is perfectly natural. They do it to us all the time. Normally I'll be wrong. <laughs> 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 Do we all? I was ho- I was wondering if anybody would catch that. <laughs> I would be concerned, you know, with all these nosebleeds. If you know, I started seeing you Hawaiian shirts, maybe mirrors around the apartment, right? But you know, you know, it's none of that. They're just books and old newspapers. <laughs> it really is. And, uh, I'm turning into an old crazy. Per- Let's just start the show so I can. What, what, I, I am worried. Like, um, Do, let's start the show with this. Hold on, you can talk about how worried you are for me. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We bring you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves while putting people before political parties. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective with the goal of leaving you better informed. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, become a subscriber on Patreon at WeAreLibertarians.com, and without your financial support, independent media like this cannot exist. In exchange for supporting our program, we give you great bonus content. This show is crowdsourced, so you can send us news with the hashtag WALnews or in our Facebook group or Discord channel. Thank you so much for everybody who's uh, participating those and using the hashtag. So I got a couple cool stories and uh, found uh, things that I hadn't seen by searching on Twitter for the ha- wall hashtag, so WALnews. Roy's taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. 
Please be warned that this show is raw, unedited, and authentic, so the language is sometimes strong and offensive. In this show, we will bring you the headlines. We're going to talk about the Republican tax bill. We're going to talk about Zimbabwe. We're going to talk about CBD oil, net neutrality, Time Warner, ATT. we got like 12, 15 topics we're going to get to over the course of the next hour, hour and a half. So uh, we have a lot for you. We are going to be mostly sex-free. This is going to be a mostly non-sex scandal show. That Please put your shirt down, Harry. So with that, let me introduce my co-host uh, for the Tuesday show, as always, Harry Price. How are you, Harry? Going good, going good. It's uh, not as warm as it has been in um, the studio the last few weeks. I no, don't, f- hmm? no fire, yeah. No fire. There's no fire this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I have been very busy prepping for the show. I'm, I'm it's like a beautiful mind and ear. It, it is. It's very. Um, I'm actually concerned in here. You're getting <laughs> these uh, nosebleeds. There is old newspapers, magazines, and books everywhere. In library here. books. There's yeah. uh, fifty library books sitting over there. No, I really am turning into. Like in fifty years, it will literally. It, it, this audience and I will be one fully. I will have no other friends. I will be in a cabin in the woods somewhere, like Matt Drudge, mm-hmm. just <laughs> tweeting out to the world my thoughts uh, it, it, with my friends, the newspapers, and the books, and a library. I, I'm, I'm turning into an old crank who just sits alone in his apartment reading uh, strange newspapers from foreign lands. You're, you've got about like a few more steps. I think three more. <laughs> you've got the beard going, got the hat and the flannel. So, yeah, you're really close, you know. Hopefully we'll get the um, the We Are Libertarians truck going by uh, July for you. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. yeah, we, uh, we, yes, I'm doing fine. I do have a sinus infection, but I'm okay. Other than that, I, I'm really not going crazy. I'm just really having, <laughs> thanks for the quotations, Harry. Uh, no, I'm having a blast. Like, the reason we have like 15 topics is because I've really, uh, Harry and I were talking about where we're at with We Are Libertarians and where I'm at, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm having a blast kind of getting back into prepping and reading the news. And if you're looking at the Facebook group or if you're looking at the, my Facebook page or my Twitter page or the wall Facebook page, you're seeing a lot of news and content and opinions and stuff. And that's just because I learned a long time ago from a uh, comedian named Tim Wilson. He's passed on now, but he's one of the greatest comedians to ever live that you've never heard of. And he's so funny. And I just watched him. He was a genius, a certified genius. And there's also a guy that I work with that goes by Donnie Baker, but his real name's Ron. And he's uh, just a brilliant guy, too. And I was like, what makes them so special as comedians? And it's the amount of writing that they do, the amount of prep work that they do, the amount of just, like, obsession that they have for their craft and so it's the more you input into your brain, the more it's going to come out. And so I've been kind of living that the last three weeks, and I'm loving it. I'm having, I'm having this has been one of the most fun periods of We Are Libertarians I, I think I've ever had because, just because I have my, uh, my, uh, I'm not trying to use that word anymore. My, my nerd switch has been, has lit, been, my yeah. pilot has been just lit. lit back up. Yep. The, the fire's back. The Yeah, what we were talking about basically is like, you're, instead of building the platform like you did for a year and a half, two years, you're back to doing why you started this podcast in the first place. Yep. yep. The reason why you got on the couch is said, "Hey, let's do this. Let's record. Let's do this. Let's have some fun." Exactly. So I'm I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. I think uh, the shows have been uh, pretty good, and I uh, hope you're out there sharing them with people because we we do not exist if it isn't for our audience donating on Patreon sharing the show, and just uh, uh, being a great friend of this program. I want to thank whoever sent me this hat. As you all know, I've become a hat guy. Someone sent me this beautiful black hat with the Libertarian Porcupine on it. It looks great. It's a very nice hat, uh, and I'm wearing it on the show. I, it did not come with the tag who sent it, but if you sent it to me, please let me know. Hit me up, and uh, I appreciate you sending it, and that is what I am modeling for tonight. All right, so before we jump into the headlines of the week, let's start with Dear Leader's Mailbox. Now, we've been remiss in, uh, I got to inbox zero, I cleared everything out, I have no emails in any of my email boxes, and that includes the We Are Libertarians email box, so I have prepared 
all of the emails that you've sent me for Dear Leader Letters. Now, as you know, Harry's a very successful man. You all respect Harry a lot. You all might respect me a little bit. Uh, but Dear Leader, nonetheless, is very successful, very handsome, uh, and loves to give advice. You can write about politics, ro romance. I love to teach. Uh, so this is about racism, Harry. So we have to do this one this episode. So this is from one of our best friends, Lisa. Lisa Crosby. She writes, Hello from Miami. I have a serious question for Wall, but I mainly think my question is going to be best answered by Harry. Well, that seems like profiling. Yep. Today I brought my surgery center co-workers all a little something for their desk for Halloween. One of the Haitian ladies pointed out that I bought her a white ghost this year, and I bought her a white ghost last year, so I must be racist. I don't understand. Ghosts are not black, so how can I be racist buying a white one? I told her I was not racist, and to prove it, I was going to ask my black friend in Indiana what he thought about me buying a white ghost two years in a row for her. She called me something in Creole, which I think translates to only my silly white girl, or at least <laughs> that is what she tells me. It could be worse. So anyway, am I racist? <laughs> this is a fun new game that we can play. Am I racist? Send us your letters for Harry to answer at editor at wearelibertarians.com. So, is Lisa racist? 50%. Uh, you're white, <laughs> naturally racist. Uh, <laughs> race, all racist. Uh, the... <laughs> And white ghosts, yes, they're black ghosts, and there's Hispanic ghosts. Just don't give them, you know, just don't make a whole all black ghost that's that's also racist. Um, no, you're not racist. Uh, she's uh, they're uh, they're Haitians, so just be careful. Um, this is the one group of people who did kill a lot of white people on an island, so just be very careful. Uh, if everyone don't know about the Haitian um, uprivaling, uh, it's really really cool movie. Eighteen oh four, like watch it. It's it's in a really cool documentary. You can get get it, but. Uh, but no, you're not racist for that. Someone just seen something into it, yeah, that they wanted to, um, because, like I said, they're ghosts. Ghosts don't exist, <laughs> and if they did, the, you know, it's they, ghosts don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's my brain goes, and it's just they do the Haitians. Man. They're bone and, and goofy, and you know what? All bones are white. <laughs> 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 this, you know, your bones white. Yeah, my bones are white. <laughs> they're heavier than yours, but they're white. <laughs> <laughs> Which a lot of our listeners found out that that, that black p privilege of yours with heavy bones is not not fair, Harry. That's why I sink. That's why I don't swim. <laughs> <laughs> you don't swim for other reasons. <laughs> uh, Haitians, poor, shout out to Haitians. Half yeah. a million are being sent back by the Trump administration after the earthquake in 2010. Mm -hmm. They were uh, granted asylum here, and they are being sent back. Which is awful. Um, Haitians are very hardworking and great people. I wish we could keep them. I don't like witches, so I'm just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I don't really care. Uh, all right, I told you that uh, th this would be a sex-free episode, sex scandal-free, uh, mostly. But I feel like we need to talk about John Conyers, and, and because I, I found uh, first, I found this interesting for his response, uh, which I want to read a little bit of that to you. But uh, it sounds like it's going to be more serious. Uh, as, as we said in previous episodes, it, you have to check your political bias at the door and treat each one of these accusations mm -hmm. like you're searching for the truth and not for uh, whataboutism, which is, well, what about Bill Clinton? Well, what about Al Franken? Well, what about Roy Moore? Like, check your whataboutism. So John Conyers, ancient Democrat from <laughs> Michigan... He serves in the Detroit area. He's just super old at this point. Um, he came out, uh, he was, BuzzFeed News came out with the accusation. Now, here's the, th here's the funny thing, and here's why I think this is interesting. Mike Cernovich, who some of you may or may not know, he's associated with Alex Jones, and he's a, he's a, a, a some would call him a conspiracy theorist, journalist, some would call him an alt-right journalist, some would call him uh, a truth teller. It depends on what your shade of uh, conspiracy level is. Galt loves him. I think he's funny, and I think he has an interesting point of view, but I think you take it with a grain of salt like you do every single reporter out there, including the show. Um, he is the one who fed this to BuzzFeed. 
Now, I think this could be an interesting partnership. People like on, in the Alex Jones alt-right world are not going to be taken seriously as media figures. But what if they start partnering with people like BuzzFeed News, who have a left bent, to start exposing some of these people? So uh, Cernovich is the one who basically fed this to BuzzFeed, and he was the source of the big scoop from BuzzFeed Monday night that John Conyers has made repeated sexual advances towards female staffers and secretly reached a financial settlement with one accuser. The story was based largely on documents and affidavits supplied by Cernovich to BuzzFeed's reporters. Uh, it's odd. Um, it's something like Michael Moore dropping damning info about the president to Fox News. So it is, uh, it's 60 Minutes called Cernovich, uh, a magnet for readers with a taste for stories that have no basis in fact. Um, take with that what you will. So, anyways, so uh, Cernovich acquired the congressional documents after he offered to pay $10,000 for them. The offer was made in a series of now-deleted tweets last week. I will pay $10,000 for details of these settlements, cash or Bitcoin or check or whatever you want, he tweeted, and somebody produced them. So he took them to, uh, he didn't say if he actually paid anyone or not. He's Ben Smith, Tuesday, after the story broke, said he was unaware of that, saying BuzzFeed, a bastion of journalistic integrity would never pay for information. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> Good old. It, it, no, please don't. It's ridiculous. Um, but it, it is, they were extremely uh, careful. This is not like Watergate, but we did our due diligence. So he didn't, uh, Cernovich wouldn't say who his story, who his source was. But I think that's an interesting connection. And I think that's not something that you may have heard. About and might not get covered, but I think that could be an interesting vehicle for some of these people who are on the far right, just as on the far left, people who have access to information and are anti-government but necessarily won't partner with a Washington Post. You know, like, there may be some truth to Alex Jones saying, I've got sources at the highest levels, I've got the documents. There may be some of that. Yeah. Well, like, uh, I think there is because sometimes he just kind of calls it. I'm not saying he calls it all the time uh, because he connects the dots to things that, you know, he really, you know, he makes a lot of jumps in, you know, of connecting dots. But do do people listen to his show and do people and people like him in different powers of government? Yeah, that, I, I can believe that, you know. Yeah. You know, people listen to his show, like, especially um, people who are up at, I'm shocked if the more people I know that listen to him are the people who work third shift. Mm-hmm. I found a lot of IT people that listen to Alex Jones, especially third shifters. They're like, oh, I love Alex Jones. Why? I, I don't know. I don't know. They like listening to him. <laughs> so like, if, so if they see something weird, they're probably like, oh, I saw this on the network the other day. You know, and Interesting. So, so he, you know, he probably does got sources like that in weird different spots. Or the reason I can notice him in like a networking guys and stuff like that is because that's who I hang out with. Hmm. So. Interesting. Yeah, I love I love Alex Jones. I think he's hilarious. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, a uh, uh, little Alex Jones chill. I like you know, sitting in video <laughs> games, looks at Alex Jones. It's hilarious. He's he's the greatest unintentional comedian of all time. Like you don't have to believe in what he says to like just listen to him because it is it is hilarious. I mean, it's funny funny stuff. I'm gonna blare that. And I'm blaring nothing but Alex Jones on the way to uh, Lancaster. It's it's easier. Than that. <laughs> all right. So about the BuzzFeed uh, Conyers story. Um, basically, BuzzFeed on Monday night said Conyers had this uh, all- allegation against him. And I only bring this up because I wanted to break from all the sex scandal news, and I'm sure you do too. I wanted to talk about real stuff that's happening in the world tonight. Uh, but this is real stuff because listen to this. Conyers claims that at the time of the settlement, uh, he, he, he basically he denied the claims at the time with the settlement. Uh, there's really not much information out there, just that this happened, and which made it kind of dubious. So Conyers said, My office resolved the allegations with an express denial of liability in order to save all involved from the rigors of protracted litigation. That should not be lost in the narrative, Conyers said. Uh, Let me just skip down to the actual statement or read the whole thing, because he clearly didn't write it. He's too old to write this well, but I thought it was really well written. Uh, I have long been and continue to be a fierce advocate for equality in the workplace, and I fully support the rights of employees who believe they have been harassed or discriminated against to assert claims against their employers. That said, it is important to recognize that the mere making of an allegation does not mean it is true. 
The process must be fair to both the employee and the accused. The, me the current media environment is bringing much-needed focus to uh, the important issue of preventing harassment in workplaces across the country. However, equally important to keep in mind is in this particular moment is the principle of due process, and those accused of wrongdoing are presumed innocent unless and until an investigation establishes otherwise. In our country, we strive to honor this fundamental principle that our, all are entitled to due process. In this case, I expressly and vehemently denied the allegations made against me and continue to do so. My office resolved the allegations with the express denial of liability in order to save all involved from the rigors of protracted litigation. That should not be lost in the narrative. The resolution was not for millions of dollars, but rather an amount that equaled to a reasonable severance payment. There are statutory requirements of confidentiality that apply to both the employee and me in, regarding, in regard to this matter. To the extent the House determines to look further at these issues, I will fully comply with an investigation. Now, uh, a person involved in the case, which went through the Office of Compliance, which has a secret mechanism, secret mechanism by which Congress has kept an unknown number of sexual harassment allegations quiet, said it actually reached a point where he did know. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, uh, I think that's, that's, if Roy Moore had given this statement, mm -hmm. <laughs> it probably would have ended a lot of it, because, like, I, 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 like I've said in past episodes, I've worked with a lot of rich, powerful men, and they, a lot of those guys are like Mike Pence. You know, you've probably heard the Mike Pence rule, mm -hmm. yeah, where it, it basically follows Billy Graham's, uh, uh, Modesto Manifesto, which... One of the tenets of that was never be alone in a room with a woman, never put yourself in a position where your integrity could be questioned, mm -hmm. you know, because it, because A, like, it's respectful to your wife. It's something that I followed when I was married, um, partly because my wife was insecure, and I just wanted to be respectful, and I, I didn't want the hassle. I didn't want her going through stuff. I didn't want to involve, it just was easier, and you, you, you don't have to be alone with a woman. Like, you just don't. And... Uh, you know, a coworker today said, like, to take that one step further. Like, would you ever say or do something to a female coworker or a male coworker in, that you wouldn't do in front of your spouse, girlfriend, wife, husband? Like, if you wouldn't do it in front of your grandma, don't do it at work. Yeah, yeah. You know? Pretty, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. Unless you have a really crazy grandma. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that, that seems to be fair. But it's amazing to me how many, like, I posted this on Facebook, and immediately... A bunch of liberal leaning women on my Facebook wall. Well, he just can't keep his dick in the pants. He just thinks that women are predators and that he's a predator and he just needs to. Like, no, that's not what the basic concept of respect amounts to. Right. Like, it, it's. You just can't win. Like, you, you, you can't seem to win. And, and these rich, powerful guys just don't. A lot of them don't put themselves in these positions because I, I've worked with people that have been sued just because they have money. Correct, yeah. A lot of them, like, they're like, hey, let me go grab my lawyer about this. This right. is a really good situation. Let me go grab my lawyer. You know, or they don't buy anything because... It was the same thing with, um, um, during your, like, a, during elections, right? Mm -hmm. Where, uh, the person's running the, um, you know, the candidate never drives their car. They don't buy anything. Mm -hmm. They don't do any of that anymore. Be, you know, you try to keep them separated from that stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, it... And those simple rules, it just like it just makes things easier. Uh, I, I even remember, like in my health, like like I said, like my high school um, health class, uh, my, uh, the teacher told us never, ever, ever be alone with a woman in your dorm room. Right? Don't, 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 don't do it. Not like that. And she she also added the um, um, the racist remark, uh, especially if she's a white woman. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, here's the problem. Like the ten twenty percent of guys that are the predators that are the scumbags. Mm -hmm ruin it for the other 80% of guys and 100% of women. Like, it just, it's, it, it, and, and in this current climate, it, the climate denies women opportunity because as, as, th there's benefits and cons to this. Like, the cons are some employers may choose to favor a male candidate for an internship or an employment opportunity over a female candidate because they don't want the, extra stress because what women have to understand is that in a workplace environment now and, and it, it, it like not just now but really like the last 10 years 
if I have a female coworker sexually harassing me and I go to HR and, and introduce that, I get laughed at. A female, impl- a female coworker can have, has the power to have any of us fired based on allegations. Yes. Like, it doesn't have to be true. And that's a power that uh, ought to be wielded responsibly, should be taken seriously, because women should be taken seriously when there are allegations. Correct, right, yeah. Because th- the chances of sexual abuse or sexual harassment being true is probably on their side. <laughs> like, I would say that there are far more... It's not... I wouldn't say. There are way more people who are sexually harassed or assaulted versus the mattress girl. Like, there's just way more in the other spectrum. But from a male perspective, it does make you, in the back of your mind, rethink every interaction that you have with female coworkers. Yeah, and... Um I really don't want to jump into this topic. I thought we were going to stay away from this stuff. Uh, we're, 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 cl- you know, we're close to getting out of it, I promise. We're just going to stay out of it. But, um, yeah, uh, I see what you're talking about that because a lo- lot of the times, like, those people in power don't really see their power. Yeah. And I also get it from the women's perspective because it puts them in a um, situation that, they, you know, they don't know what to expect. You know? Absolutely. It, and and trying to almost like put the onus on them, you know, that... You know, you've got to do this. You know, like, I was like, crap, now I've got to deal with this guy. It, it's, deal it, with this. Let me say, can you put it brilliantly? Like, it wasn't it, it wasn't an, a, a question to them. It was a predicament. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah, it's that, yeah. And, 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 it, get, and, and it gets, you know, it, and, I, and I can kind of get it. There's a several different times um, for a while, I want, um, until, like, uh, Lacey really got used to the creepitarian aspect of different <laughs> uh, li- liberty spaces, that she would just hang around me, and I couldn't understand, like, why is she sitting there hanging out with me? I'm just sitting there jamming on a keyboard with a bunch of other nerds who are just sitting there, like, doing things <laughs> on it, you know, like, and I'm trying to make my pineapple do different stuff to, you know, like, show it off and show different people and discuss and, like, do all this information, and she would just sit there, just totally the first few years, mm-hmm. until I realized... And she, you know, basically came to me and was like, "No, it's the freaking creepitarians. There's a lot of the guys that will, um, you know, like want to hang out, but you know, but they're only really there for one reason, and, yeah. and, and it creeped her out. And so it just she just you know it was just easier if she just hung around me. Uh, all right. Now, before we all stand up and say, uh, Conyers, standing up for men. Uh, came out tonight, just before the program, as I was prepping, about an hour before. Uh, BuzzFeed reports a former schedule in Conyers' office said she was the victim of unwanted touching, touching repeatedly and daily. She was not part of the harassment, which makes her a, sec- a second victim. Uh, that, that settlement was made in 2015. Um, the victim of the new incident sued Conyers for over $100,000, but later withdrew the lawsuit after the court denied her request to keep the complaint private. Now she's going public. Uh, she described daily harassment from Conyers, who's like 90, from May to July 2016, including rubbing her shoulders, kissing her forehead, covering and attempting to hold her hand, and more. She said this caused insomnia, anxiety, depression, and chest pains, all of which I buy, because, like, if if your workplace is hostile like that, that's stressful. Yeah. And it was all made worse after Kanye's wife, Monica, called her a whore. Uh, the staffer eventually became so unwell, she attempted to take sick leave and was fired after Conyers' chief of staff demanded proof that she was sick. Man. So, that there's that. Yeah. So, now, uh, final thought on this. The Axios website, A-X-I-O-S, was, is, one of the founders is Mike Allen, formerly of the Politico Playbook. That was, like, the must-read thing that everybody in the swamp read. Mike Allen is, like, the foremost gossip, like, verifiable gossip monger in the in the city. Uh, somebody, if you want to know what's going on in the swamp, go to Axios.com, get their daily emails. Um, he reported, members of Congress with histories of mistreating women should be extremely nervous. Major outlets, including CNN, are dedicating s- substantial newsroom resources to investigating sexual harassment allegations against numerous lawmakers. A Republican source told me he's gotten calls from a well-known D.C. reporter who are gathering stories about sleazy members. Uh-oh. Veronica De, De Rougie, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from Reason on their Reason podcast said, I have two steak dinners on several congressmen. So look for that to come out. Now, <laughs> now on the show prep order today, Men's Day, 
Mm-hmm. Is on here. Can you Inter- explain what Men's Day is? International Men's Day was this past Sunday. International Men's Day was a day like every time, like you know, like uh, it's a day meant for talk about and discuss men's issue. It was a day that you know people, some people don't like discussing or bringing up International Men's Day because they believe that every day is International Men's Day, which that is incorrect. Uh, but this is the day is for bringing about and talking about men's issue, like male suicide, a uh, male of uh, like um, fa- uh, fatherhood abandonment, be not having their um, uh, their children with him and not getting like getting custody and um, um, custody battles um, because a lot of the different times when it comes down to it, like a lot of uh, fathers, they want 50-50 custody. That's not the case. They usually get every other weekend. So they're basically um, seeing their kids, what is it? I want to say what the math is on that. Was it 40, 40, week, 40 days a year, which mm-hmm. is ridiculous? Some of different holidays. And for someone as a um, – and if you see your kid, you're used to seeing your kids every day. Like right now, I get to see um, Gunther every day, and I'm able to I see her like once a weekend – uh, like every other weekend, that would tear, that would tear me apart. And you right. can understand these different men, um, the it's different males issue. And the main reason I brought it up because it almost it get, it went by. Most people never noticed that it's National Men's Day. Mm-hmm. When it's internet, um, when it's International Women's Day, it's a big thing. People are talking about it. It's everywhere. Um, but on International Men's Day, it's sun, that Sunday you were supposed to wear blue to sit, like talk about the situation and bring it up. I wore blue. Some people didn't really notice. I did try to talk to some people. The other thing that, that was also really cool, which um, I didn't really notice and didn't really think about even looking at, uh, I was listening to the um, Honey Badger Radio podcast, and they were talking about how uh, Google usually does a doodle, hmm. the Google Doodle. Uh, for they did one for National Women's Day. They do like for these, all these Dinkin holidays. It was a the the basic Google freaking doodle that day. No International Men's Day uh, uh, thing for that one. Uh, so yeah. So and it do, so like so when International Women's Day does happen and you see how much of a big deal it is, how everywhere and everyone gets to talk about it. You know when it went past. Almost like you know, no one even noticed it on the Sunday, especially it's football days, just game day, all these things. Like, you know, no one changed their cleats, no one put on ribbons, there were no parades. It's kind of just went by, and it just kind of just it's a great way to it's not great, it just shows you like a lot of male disposability, and mm-hmm. that's like a huge, massive problem. Um, I, I know I'm not the best one to talk about these issues. I, I am fully aware and am informed on a lot of these issues. That's another reason why I wanted to bring Terrence Pop on the show so he can give a, a huge better perspective. He actually has been chewed up a lot of by this system and has experienced a lot of, like, uh, you know, this, the way the system does be chipped. And from being a military vet, he's, he understands, I feel like he sees that, especially the male suicide rate, that that, like, almost for example, First hand, so yeah. that's that would be a better thing for him. Like I can sit here and talk about it, but trust me, th- when we get him on here, it's got you know that guy will be able to share like more personal story. Him and Blake, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, I I am unfamiliar with Terrence Pop, but uh, Harry has been enlightening me. And if you're a Terrence Pop fan and a Wall fan, tweet at him. Yeah, say hey, make sure you get your butt on Wall. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try to get him on back. Get him in here. Get him on here. We we because I really do want to watch. Uh, the other thing that went by. Um, Oh, sorry. Keep going. No, you're fine. Sure. Go ahead. Didn't want to like, coup the show. No. Um, the, the other thing I like. The, the thing we I, have the, taken all of us. <laughs> we've taken all, I have. I have taken. I'm dear leader now. Okay. okay. Go but uh, the, uh, the other day that went by was yesterday, the Trans Day of Remembrance. You see all these platitudes a lot of people give about. Uh, you know, transgender rights, bathrooms, and all these different things this past year and stuff like that. I was kept the gender thing, but the, you know, November twentieth usually goes by unannounced, and most people, only people really in the trans community, really understand what's going on when it comes to the, the day of remembrance. So this is when people talk about um, uh, all the people that we, you have, uh, all the trans people that have lost. Mm-hmm. It has gotten better, but it's still like worse. Like as usually like. Uh, uh, the train day of remembrance. You usually we usually did like a candle vigil and go about about the um, different deaths. And it was also hard harder to find in the past because a lot of news outlets would misgender and dead name a lot of trans people. So getting the name record to read a name record of all the uh, the dead trans people that we because the, regardless of what people may think of like people are more accepting of a trans and or but so many people are accepting of gays and people are accepting of different people with other races 
for some reason, trans people are still different, are murdered in this country for just being trans. Right. Um, now, are some people murdered in this country for being black? Possibly. Are people murdered in this country for being white? Possibly. But it's more of, it, it becomes, it's a huge problem in the trans community. And not only for being murdered, also the suicide rate in the, in the trans community. Also, a lot of that has to do with substance abuse, people, uh, family members and accepting them into the R, um, living out in the, living out on the streets. Um, it's, it's it's a very hard situation in this country to be trans. It's it's not a good situation for a lot of people because it's a lot of different things that are going on with their body or going on with their in, inside their mental health. And a lot of people they they try to understand they don't understand it. And it's it's so you it's very hard for them. And it's yeah because like even it's like well like getting a job they have to worry about you know being dead named misgendered. It's so like the day Explain I remember, dead named. Dead naming is when you, you would use someone's um, old name. Um, I always hate it. Uh, any um, if you, I'm not going to do it. Like let's, I'm just going to co- create. I'm creating a fake person, a fictional person right now. Um, let's say with an FTM, um, a female to male um, transsexual. Their original name. Let's say let's go with Stephanie, and they trans and, and their new name, their real name, um, their uh, their. They, they, they've given themselves a say it's David mm-hmm. and people would still call them Stephanie sure. dead naming them and that would still happen when they would go with life like any background checks and stuff like that that dead naming bringing that name back up which also you know it can also can trigger dysphor- dys- dysphoric events so sure just, we, we had a castmate Maya action uh, some of you may remember and episode three two or three uh, Jeremiah was on and then somewhere in between then uh, she transition to Maya and we did a podcast called Creating Maya which you can hear on our SoundCloud page on our archive you can find it uh, just go to SoundCloud and Google We Are Libertarians you can hear the whole 20 episode thing but part of the there's another podcast that we have in your RSS if you Google in iTunes or whatever look in iTunes for the cost one of those episodes is Maya's story where Maya was at a particular moment in her experience where she was looking at committing suicide because it was so tough and and Maya and I don't talk anymore uh, <laughs> because that's she's a difficult person um, but I, I really do feel for people who who have have that thing in their life like it, it just it was and, and as close as Maya and I were I would still constantly use the wrong pronoun it was unintentional and you know she was forgiving of that but I mean it, it is it's it so you can kind of hear our journey. My journey as her friend and her journey as, as a trans uh, male to female trans person in, in that, and if you're curious. So go check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what it's like. And, yeah. and that's what, you know, November 20th is about. It's just about just like remembering um, and just giving support to people of uh, people of the trans community that uh, committed suicide or were just like murdered in this country. Yeah. And it's... And it's still sad that it does happen that people are like just for someone living their life how they are not hurting anyone and getting murdered from it, getting murdered for it. It's awful. Yeah, I mean, just to, on a human level, you don't have to understand it, you don't have to even approve of it, but like on a human level, you like they deserve dignity and respect mm-hmm. and love, and yeah, it's a, it's a it's a tough thing. So, all right, uh, now let's move on to the tax bill. The House passed a tax bill. Uh, it was, let's see, on all my show prep here, 227 to 205 with a handful of Republicans uh, from blue states joining the opposition. Uh, the House plans to cut taxes by roughly $1.5 trillion over the next decade with tax reductions for both businesses and individuals. The plan would slash the corporate tax rate from 35% down to 20%, and would condense the current seven individual tax brackets into four while expanding the child tax credit and doubling the standard deduction. The lower corporate tax rate would be a permanent change. This is from Reason, by the way. Uh, this is Peter Sudeman. House Republicans just passed a major tax reform bill. Um, the lower corporate tax rate would be a permanent change. However, a new $300 tax credit, dubbed the Family Flexibility Credit, is intended to help middle uh, class uh, folks, ex- it would expire in 2023, leading one analysis to find that after the year, only 40% of Americans would pay a lower taxes under this plan, and only 22% would pay more. Uh, so it re- 
reduces or eliminates many major deductions, including carve-outs for medical expenses, cars, moving, tax preparation, student loan interest. The plan gets rid of the state and local tax deduction, or SALT, as you might have heard, for income and sales tax. That would be eliminated and caps the deduction for property taxes. So you're, you're getting an increase in your overall write-off, but they're getting rid of a lot of those deductions. And the reason that they did that is it, they had the goal of making, you know, putting your tax return on a postcard, yeah. which they're not going to meet that goal. But they... It's a good step. Yeah, it, but they, these tax credits that you can write off really are just favors for special interest groups or they're little nuggets to try and nudge people into doing certain things and behaviors. And so I support them getting rid of it. But some of the things like the uh, student loan interest, you've got some students who are going to end up paying taxes on their student loans as if they're making $75,000 that year, uh, which you know the standard deduction may not uh, overcome. So some of that is is uh, going to be difficult. So, but that's that's part of the pain. If you're going to try and simplify the tax code, you're going to have to get rid of the deductions and the exemptions, and you're going to piss people off. And I think they probably knew that going into it. Um, the biggest benefit is residents of high income, high tax states that tend to vote Democratic. Uh, hence, the handful of blue state. Ge- it's not a benefit. Uh, basically, I don't know what he's talking about here. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Uh, Basically, by removing, you can write off your state and local taxes, your previous year's taxes, and you also can deduct your mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. So they made a calculation, (laughs) and uh, (laughs) they said, listen, we're going to piss people off, and because we're doing it through a process called budget reconciliation, which I I will explain in a moment, they have to meet a certain goal. It basically has to be revenue neutral. This tax bill essentially had to spend no more than it than it's like if you're cutting taxes the way that Washington works, like to you and I, if you're cutting taxes, we get to keep more of our money. But to the government, they're bringing in just less money, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now our, Republicans would argue that like something like the permanent corporate tax cut, where you're going from 35 percent down to 20 percent, which was an arbitrary number. Basically, they said, well, some European countries are 21 percent, so we'll get lower than them and go to 20 percent. Still not like the 12 of Ireland, but that corporate tax rate is going to bring jobs here, it's going to create more jobs, which creates more taxpayers, which creates more growth, and so over time you're projected to get revenue neutral. Uh, There are a lot of people like Ron Johnson, Bob Corker, who are saying no to this because it increases the budget deficit by $1.5 trillion over the course of the next 10 years. Uh, And some of the arguments opposed to that are like, yes, right now in these numbers, but eventually it's going to pay for itself in economic growth. Um, (laughs) So it really comes down to a few questions, a little, some more details before I go into some of this. Uh, Heritage Foundation put together a handy chart here, uh, and I've linked this in the We Are Libertarians group. You can search Wall News and find the link for this, uh, but it's comparing the House and Senate tax bills, and Individual tax rates, there's currently seven brackets. The House takes it to four brackets. The Senate bill is seven brackets still. And uh, basically what's going to happen is the House has passed their bill. The Senate has introduced their version. The Senate will haggle over this. And then they will go to budget reconciliation. And they will then both the Senate and the House will have to vote again on the final bill. So they will take the House version, the Senate bill, bill, mash it together, then both houses vote on it again. I'll explain why later. Um, So the Senate bill is seven brackets. Uh, The standard deduction right now for single people is $63.50, married people $12,700. Under both the House and Senate bill, it's $12,000 for single, $24,000 for married. All right, so it's effectively doubling in both cases. The... uh, the income or sales property taxes are fully deductibilized right now. So you can take your state and local property taxes and deduct them. Mm. House repeals SALT deduction for income, sales tax caps, property tax deduction at 10000 um, 
the Senate bill repeals full salt deduction. Now, they, they are punching blue states in the face, but they're making a calculation that somebody who lives in a blue state, the majority of them are not going to vote for them anyways. Right. The polarizing effect of that is that when the states have to make it up, who do you think they're going to punish? Like a state like California, they're going to they're going to craft tax policy that takes it right out of the red red areas' pockets, essentially. It's you know? okay. Most people are leaving California anyways. Yeah. So like this, so you can deduct your property taxes. Mm-hmm. Shout out to everyone out in New Hampshire with those high property taxes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, now, pass through corporations. I don't know if I'm a ta- pass through corporate. Like, I basically, Wall is me, and I am Wall, and uh, so I claim all all that Patreon money that you guys donate. I put on my taxes, and then I write off some of the equipment costs and stuff like that. So, so I essentially put all on my personal income taxes because I'm not an LLC yet, although I'm doing that soon. So, uh, it's that pass through tax treatment. There's currently passed through income taxed at personal income tax rates. Under the House bill, maximum rate capped at 25%. Then there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, For the Senate bill, deduction allowed for 17.4%. So they're going to give a little bit of uh, those pass-through folks a break. Right now, the corporate tax rate is 35%. Both the House and Senate want to make it a permanent rate of 20%. Uh, in 2019, this is really the important thing. This is the part that they all agree on, that this is the thing that has to be done, and they are willing to give up anything to get it done. Uh, expensing, right now it's complicated rules. Uh, House bill, five years of expensing for new equipment. Uh, same with the Senate. Child tax credit, currently 1000 for each child. Um, phased out at 110000 combined if you're married. Uh, it would be a $1,600 credit, $300 credit for each parent and non-child dependents, $1,650 with a $500 credit in the Senate bill. Um, there's an international tax rule where the Trump administration tried to write in something where they were going to penalize, you know, basically investments going overseas, and that got taken out in the Senate bill because multinational corporations screamed bloody murder. <laughs> um <laughs> So Obamacare tax is 3.8% net investment income tax. That has not been changed. Um, reparation tax. I don't know what this is. Harry, you're getting a tax break. Yeah. <laughs> I, have pay, I, I have to pay back those reparations. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, the estate tax, 40% tax on assets over $5.49 million per person. Immediately doubles the basic exclusion, repeals the tax after 2024. In the Senate, they don't repeal the tax. So those are some of the facts. If you're a true nerd, Tax Foundation has a great document on it. Uh, there's there's a lot of good stuff out there on on this. Mm-hmm. Um, Ron Paul, um, and, and it really comes down to a few questions. I'll get to Ron in a second. But so as I was kind of thinking about this this morning, it. it I wrote down a few questions. The first question you have to ask is, do you care about Republicans? I personally don't care about Republicans, but if you are a Republican that listens, you probably do care about Republicans. Um, Harry, I don't know. Do you care about Republicans? I don't care about Republicans. All right, so... Parties are empty buses. Exactly. So the Republican Party essentially needs to get something done. Like, they, uh, (laughs) you know, this headline from the Washington Post... Republicans cite donor pressure to deliver on tax bill. And Republican Representative Chris Collins of New York said, my donors are basically saying, get it done or don't ever call me again. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty intense. And the the pressure is on the Republicans <laughs> to do anything because they haven't done anything. And, and, you know, like Lindsey Graham basically said if Republicans can't agree and pass tax care or tax reform Mm -hmm. when you've got the House, the Senate, and the the presidency, and the Supreme Court, like, what good are you? Great point, Lindsey. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've ever agreed on anything. I know, which is weird. Right. (laughs) And it's so true. So the, the corporate tax rate is the thing that they're really all hanging their hats on. So the Republicans have to get this done, and they're not doing it, like, this bill is crafted to help the rich and the uh, and corporations. Land now, owners. Landowners, too. 
Like it, it, it's really if you're in the middle class or the lower class, you're not going to really see any tax relief. You're not going to see any benefit, but it, except for maybe lower prices in goods. Yeah, because well, explain business taxes. Well, like if you're if you're mostly middle up, middle middle and middle upper class. Most of those small business owners that are middle class, um, you will see a break from this. The uh, middle, um, the, the, especially the upper middle class, people are breaking up for that, or the. Um, the lower middle class will see that because a lot of those are landowners, that first generation of dirt trying to get to them. So a lot of people who right. have who still got their houses from the um, that, uh, during the housing crisis who bought land or have half most of multiple houses like that that pays a lot of property taxes. Right. Those people, um, those uh, that those help those people out, or people who are businesses or are struggling because. If they could deduct that that property tax, you know they've got more money to hire more people and be able to do different things. Exactly. Uh, now, uh, which I, when you first read that, I think I was property tax. I started cracking up laughing <sighs> because I remember back here in Indiana we had a huge problem with property taxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and a duel said he's like, "Mark my words, you guys put this in your constitution, and you will rue the day of having these property tax caps." And it looked like it might happen. It, yeah. <laughs> no, one hundred percent. And so they, you know, three percent for. For like property that's commercial, two percent for farms and one percent for uh, homeowners. I may have that backwards, but it's now like th- they have property tax caps, mm-hmm. prop, prop thirteen in California, and so that's why they have high income taxes. Right, and so this is really going to screw those people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Indiana, yeah, yeah. Of course, taxes aren't that high here in Indiana, but yeah. Yeah, but if they wanted well, to they, switch everything over to property taxes, they ten, can't. ten years ago they tripled. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, just in like a, in, a, in a year, like the property uh-huh. taxes. Some people saw a ninety percent increase in their property taxes. Like one guy that ran for office, Ed Angleton, went from paying four hundred, uh, like four hundred a year to fifteen hundred a year or a month or something crazy. It was just like this outrageous increase, and so he got so pissed he ran for office. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's like I like the capture nights nice because like they, they they did just they jumped it off. A lot of people have lost lost their house because yeah. they couldn't pay the taxes on it. Yeah, you know, granted, it got fixed, but you know, so what? Your your house was gone in a tax sale. Yeah, and that's the that's the, like states can't just inflate money. <laughs> so like in Indiana, they got rid of the inventory tax because Mitch Daniels came in and said it's stupid. The business owners don't want to pay inventory on pencils. So they got rid of the inventory tax. Well, lo and behold, that's what rose property taxes because local agencies just started raising taxes. Mm -hmm. And so then they had to fix that. And so then you had uh, income tax increases in all the counties, what what are called COIC taxes, county option income tax, where a county could choose to impose an income tax. And so then you had counties, and now you see kind of a diaspora even further out into the boondocks. Mm -hmm. From from these counties because people don't want to pay that COA tax. Yeah. So so every time and you look at Kansas, Kansas is a state that didn't cut spending, and then cut taxes, and then had a major budget crisis that caused Sam uh, Brownback his governorship essentially, and Kansas has had a, an absolute crazy time with their budget because they don't have the power just to inflate their money. Right. Yeah. Nuts, but like the whole inventory tax here in Indiana, that was basically you paid taxes on the things that you had here on your inventory. Right. So, so like if you were like a business, as you was getting down to this end of the year, you were just like, nope, we're going to do that till we run out. And it was like yeah. nuts being here in Indiana because it's, everything was getting no, everything's got to go. I would have to, I would have to archive and and like every like this stand. Okay, well, I bought this for thirty five. It now is worth ten. What could I sell this for? That microphone is a hundred. Yeah, yeah. got to get rid of it. Fit. Right. Yeah, uh, car dealerships are just getting rid of cars, or they just would, or you would have the issue that they just wouldn't have the cars on the lot. Like, yes, we can give you that car. I'll give you a two grand discount, but you got to wait till twenty uh, the next year. Yeah, you know, which was nuts. Like, um, I remember um, when uh, I bought my first car, went to the, there, and my dad was looking at a car. We was able to get both those cars for like three grand off each because it was the end of the year for property ta- yeah. inventory tax. Just get take these cars, take them, because they would have paid more on the freaking taxes. On just they just wanted them gone. Yeah, you know, they'll make it back on the payments. So Republicans have to get this done because they they will start to business owners will start to feel the effects. Right around the the primaries next year, and uh, start to see economic benefit around the elections, 
And if they don't do this, they're not going to have the money to compete with Democrats next year. Uh, yep. A lot of these rural Republican-held districts flip to Democrats in the in Virginia, and th- there's no doubt that Republicans are going to lose Senate and House seats, and they're possibly going to lose the House to the Democrats next next uh, November. And if that happens, then they're really out of luck. Like the impeachment proceedings are going to start with Trump, and that's just going to occupy all of our time. So like this is their one shot to get anything done any major piece of legislation done. And so a permanent corporate tax cut, I'm okay with. Uh, If So if you care about Republicans, they need to get this done. Uh, And Trump needs the win. And so he's he's trying to get a win at any cost, essentially. Do you care about yourself? If you're fine with the amount of taxes that you pay, I would imagine that looking at our analytics, most of the people that listen to us are middle, working to middle class, uh, I, I'm somewhere in between myself, and uh, I'm, I, I don't really think about all the taxes that I pay until I pay my taxes and tally it all up and go, holy shit. Uh, so I would love to pay less taxes. I'm not getting anything out of this bill. Like, I'm going to get, like, $300 back. Like, I may get a better uh, tax return check, but I'm really, because I don't take a lot of deductions, so I'm, I may see some benefit from this come tax return uh, time because of that increased deduction. But by and large, most people are not really going to see a change in their taxes. And uh, unless you're very wealthy because of the uh, wealth, the inheritance tax being killed off, or a small, if you're a business owner, especially a large business owner or a pass-through business, people like Donald Trump and Donald Trump himself stand to benefit tremendously from this bill. Which, do you care about rich people getting their taxes cut? If you don't want rich people to have their taxes cut, then you're not going to like this bill. If you don't really care, like me, because I look at it and go, well, I really don't care that three people have the same amount of wealth as the bottom 30% of the population. Like, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett built stuff. Yeah. They, so, yeah. it doesn't bother me, but it may bother some of you. Yeah, but the thing, the the, the people that they that bothers them, they, they believe that that money is going to sit in some sort of vault, and they're going to Scrooge McDuck it. Right, yeah. right. They're swimming in their. Co- hey, Scrooge McDuck, if he jumped into those coins, would break his neck. Yeah, yes, he would. Yes, he would. Bullshit. <laughs> Do you care about deficits? A lot of our audience does care about deficits, uh, and this is a really bad bill if you care about deficits because it's going to add $1.5 trillion in deficits. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at several headlines. Uh, Matt Welch, tax reform and the deficit, 1.7 quadrillion pennies and growing by the minute. Um, Basically, it's not going to be a fiscally responsible bill. Matt Welch is against this bill, and in, in, if I'm interpreting him correctly and what I've heard him speak about and write about, uh, the Senate is less and less fiscally conservative than the House. And every day there's media scrutiny and eroding poll numbers. They start uh, eroding some of the, the parts that make this financially viable, like the individual mandate, which we'll get to. Um, you know, Matt... Welch wrote in the LA Times, SALT, which is state and local tax, and the mortgage interest deduction cut are the two biggest fillers of the $4 trillion hole between the $5.5 trillion in tax cuts and projected $1.5 trillion deficit, so caving on that could blow whatever slim chance there is for passage in the Senate. Uh, so this is a, an expensive bill to the, the debt, the deficit that we're passing on to our kids. Um, Ron Paul... Like, what, what do you think about that? I mean, are you a debt hawk, a deficit hawk, Harry? It used to be, but now it's like, man, we're, it's $20 trillion in debt. Yeah, we, we, we're <laughs> fucked anyways, right? Unless you're talking about saving trillions, screw it. Smoke it up, light it up. Just see, see how high you can crank this thing. Man, I'm kind of, like, I care because it's our biggest problem, but since nobody else cares, it's like, might as well you, get some tax cuts out of it. You can't do anything. It's $20 trillion. We we spend more than we bring in. <laughs> it's twenty trillion dollars. You can't fathom that number. You not understand that that number is so large. Right. You, the only thing you've probably ever seen in the trillions is air particles and sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, like 
I, they, they, they've never even made 20 trillion Legos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's that, I mean, if you're speaking in Legos, I get it. Yeah, you know, can you imagine 20 trillion little Lego pieces? <laughs> no. Fathers around the world you couldn't cringe. Wa- you couldn't walk anywhere. <laughs> Uh, Ron Paul, for his part, at Mises.org, wrote, GOP tax plan increases the most insidious tax. Uh, I'm, you're not going to believe this, but Ron Paul wrote about auditing the Fed and inflation <laughs> as, as a counter to this bill. Uh, the Republican tax cut plan has some positive elements, such as increasing the standard deduction, creating a new family tax credit, eliminating the death tax, reducing the corporate tax rate, and lowering taxes on small businesses. It also has some flaws, such as the millionaire surcharge imposed on upper-income taxpayers. This provision reflects a belief that upper-income taxpayers only deserve a tax break if reducing their taxes serve the interest of the government by increasing economic growth. The worst part of the tax plan is that it adopts the con- chained consumer price index. Chained CPI is a way of measuring CPI that under- understates inflation's effects on our standard of living. It does this by assuming inflation has not reduced American standard of living. For example, if people now buy hamburger and can no longer afford steak, the so-called full substitution ignores the fact that if individuals viewed hamburger as a full substitute for steak, they would have bought hamburgers before chain before Fed created inflation made steak unaffordable. Now, I personally prefer hamburger to steak, but I'm a pleep. You are, please. Right. I know you. And listen, I wasn't going to bust your balls, but you're drinking Kroger brand seltzer water. Yeah, I had a cut That is back. not Perrier. I know. Yeah, I went back to the uh, uh, Kroger. I went to the Kroger brand, try it out, see if it's close. It's close, but it just doesn't give that same pop, that same bite. Um, <laughs> you're slumming it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, I want, and it was on sale, you know. I used a Kroger Plus card. I, I had to crank up their numbers because of the gas prices getting so high. I needed to like, get cheaper gas for the RX-8. So. Right. Uh, Paul continues, Chain CPI increases the, increases the inflation tax. The inflation tax may be the worst of all taxes because it is hidden and regressive. Uh, the inflation tax is not even a tax on real wages. Instead, it is a tax on the illusionary gains and in income caused by inflation the use of chain CPI to adjust tax brackets pushes individual into higher tax brackets over time. So we had to make sure that we got the good doctor in. Now you've got what up? Oh, I'm just you can't see it on the camera, so you'll have to explain it. Oh, just show uh, the national debt clock. Just watch it. It's like I, mean, I haven't seen this in years. Oh man, I remember when they said like t- uh, four. I know. I remember when I said four? I know. Libertarians were on the debt clock website. What is the what is the URL? Uh, USDebtClock.org. Yeah, you could. Man, I remember that was so small. Now look at it. That's not even reasonable anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to understand, this is tax reform, not tax relief. And essentially, what they're doing is they're just shuffling the tax burdens around. They're not really cutting taxes. They're not giving us relief. They're just kind of shuffling things around to make it simpler. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it's who got to the to the barrel first. Ryan, McCra- Ryan McCacken. McCack. <laughs> Ryan McCacken uh, at Mises.org. Hey, GOP, want to cut the burden of government? Cut spending. Uh, tax reform is really about which interest groups can modify the ter- current tax code to better suit their parochial interests. The l- end result is not a less in tax burden overall, and thus doing nothing to burst, boost real savings, real wealth creation, or real economic growth. Uh, so the Mises uh, crowd is firmly against the tax bill, and I can't say I blame them because... If you're a deficit hawk, this does nothing to cut spending, and it adds $1.5 trillion to the deficit. Less than 1%. Right. <laughs> right. That's less than 1% of the debt. Meh. Less than 1%. Right. Um, so if you're one of the lucky ones, you're getting a little bit. Uh, this, this article by Ryan McCacken, Hey GOP, want to cut the burden of government, cut spending you can find it at Mises, is really a great article. I'm not going to go through it because it, there's so much in here that's so good and so right on mm-hmm. that uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention for you to go check out, Google that, hey, GOP, want to cut the burden of government, question mark, cut spending, and share that with your friends because it really, if you're a deficit hawk, that's a great perspective, a great, a well-written article. So do you live in a blue state? If you live in a blue state, you're really pissed right now. Because you're you're taking your super high taxes that you could write off, your state and local taxes, 
You could write all that stuff off. Now you can't. Now, if you're in California or New York, your increase in standard deduction, that is probably not going to cover the doubling of your standard deduction. So if you're in a blue state, you're hosed. But they don't care about you because they're Republicans. Right. You're not going to vote for them. Which is part of the problem of this entire system. Mm-hmm. We've, we've now set up a hyper-partisan system thanks to gerrymandering and the election rigging in state assemblies and state legislation, legislate, legislative bodies by, by making sure that we have this hyper-partisan system so mm-hmm. our team wins. But what we now have is you have these massive, crazy bills where you have one or two a year that get passed in this bucket, budget reconciliation process, and these bills are a thousand pages long. They're they're passing less bills. Like in in 1996, they passed, or no, it was 1986 when they had the last uh, budget reform. They're passing like 400 bills a year now. They're passing 200 bills a year, but the pages have gone from like 200 to 1200. And and you have these massive bills that they just cram through that are super partisan that are then undone by the other side. And so the next team that comes in is can undo all of this. Like the corporate tax rate's probably set, but like some of these other tax deductions that get sunset, it's like the Patriot Act got sunset. They're making the same argument for pieces of this tax reform where, yeah, these standard deductions, we're going to have to vote on these sunsets again in 10 years, but the Congress in 10 years is not going to let us down and raise taxes. So it's not permanent. We just need to make it a sunset to get this passed because apparently some of the congressmen and senators don't know how Congress works. But Well, they do. They just right. they, because either they've been there long enough or they'd be more secure, or they just do another relief plan when that comes. Or right. the Congress is a different spot. Yeah. And a lot of them who who probably, probably put pen to paper for this thing, they're in such concrete districts, like, I'm fine, my yeah. district's secure. You yeah, know? exactly I'm, right. I'm a Republican in Kentucky. What are you going to do? I like uh, Peter King, who is the worst member of Congress. If you're looking for the worst member of Congress as, li- as a libertarian, Peter King is at the top of your list. Yeah. And I'm beating on the Republican in, um, in uh, Congress because like, everyone beats on uh, well, they're Rand. In, well, they're in power now. Yeah, everyone beats on Rand, so it's, I, I, I thought it was acceptable. So. <laughs> uh, so the mandate, the individual, so to, to, to talk about some of that undoing, part of the stupidity of this bill is, listen, it's not stupidity because I agree with it, but it's also bad economics, which I don't agree with. And so that's kind of the libertarian burden is that you've got this thing that they want to do that you go right on, but then when you really look at the math, you go, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And so that's always the problem when you look at Republican economic bills. It's just always like, yeah, that sounds great. And then you go, oh, but the math doesn't work. Yeah. (laughs) This doesn't add up. Yeah, and, and the repeal of the individual mandate is one of those. So when they passed healthcare, there was something called the three-legged stool. Mm-hmm. And when they, the Obamacare was basically designed to cover people with pre-existing conditions and to lower health care premiums, to give more people access to health care at a lower cost, and to cover people with pre-existing conditions. It did that one, but it didn't do the other two. And then, so to make that happen, they had to do something in three steps. So they, to cover pre-existing conditions they had to put in the individual mandate because if they didn't force everyone to get health insurance and then hopefully force everybody into the exchange, then what they were hoping would happen is that people would go into the exchanges, you'd fill so many people in these exchanges that there would be enough money in these pools to cover the cost of those, the the price rises, you know, the people who have pre-existing conditions use the most health care. Mm-hmm. Well, young people, like, I didn't have health insurance my entire 20s. I never went to the doctor. And and so it would have been a waste of money for me. That's true. And if I got in a car accident, I would have been, I would have been hosed anyways, even 15 years ago. So, so if you're young and healthy, you're really just transferring your money to the old and sick. Yeah. And so they, they needed that money to transfer to the old and sick, so they had to force everybody into the exchanges. 
Well, what happened is people took the penalty on their taxes. They didn't buy health insurance, or they went on private insurance plans, or they went on their parents' plans. They didn't go into the exchanges. It didn't force enough people into the exchanges to make the math work. Mm -hmm. And so what you ended up happening is the exchanges started collapsing across the nation. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the third leg of the three-legged stool is first, cover pre-existing conditions. Second, individual mandate to force people to buy into the exchanges to cover the cost of the pre-existing conditions. Third, subsidize these healthcare care exchanges to keep the insurance companies in the game. Because the insurance companies weren't going to play the game if they weren't having their costs covered. Which, from a corporate, a corporate side, you go, well, the government's forcing me to do something. You should have to pay for it. Perfectly logical if yeah. I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. If I'm the one running that business, if you're a person that hates health insurance companies, you think that's outrageous. They should just bear the burden of the cost. Well, that's not how economics works. Yeah, so, so the... The repeal of the individual mandate would leave about 13 million people uninsured over the course of the next, uh, like, five to eight years. And that would save the American taxpayers around $300 million. So that they need to get rid of the individual mandate to ma basically get to that $1.5 trillion number because... What they're doing is they're trying to trim all these things and make all this math work to make sure that they only spend $1.5 trillion because setting out in the budget reconciliation process, the rules were agreed upon that they would add no more than $1.5 trillion to the debt. Mm -hmm. And so they have to have these certain things removed and added to it to make all this math work. And one of those things is the individual mandate. But then you get certain senators like Rand Paul who say, I'm not voting for this unless the individual mandate's gone. But then you get Murkowski from Alaska going, I'm not voting for this unless the individual mandate's protected. So you, you're, you're kind of like McConnell and Paul Ryan are playing all these political games to get this to pass. So, But the truth is, if you get rid of the individual mandate, you're going to further collapse. You're going to see about a 10% increase in health care costs over the next... And that's on top of what we are already were going to see. So when the CBO says you're going to see a 10% cost of increase, you can bet that that's like an 80% increase. Because anytime the CBO score gives you a number, mm -hmm. you know that you need to like quadruple, maybe yeah. times that by 10. Just a little. Right. And so that's what they're all trying to The reconciliation process, you have to reach the CBO score, and the math has to work according to the CBO. But the CBO has never been right. Ever. They're always wrong. Yeah. Well, like, uh, that being said, like, most people's insurance is wet up this month. While they're doing their signing up for this month, I know mine did. Like, uh, I think I was paying, like, around $500 a month for the entire family, but now they want $800 a month. Right. It was ridiculous. No. So this bu budget reconciliation process, uh, a little bit about this. Uh, this is your political glossary for this episode. Um, where did it come from? It was created in 1974 in a budget law, and its main purpose is to reduce the deficit. This is from Politico, called Reconciliation Explained. Its main purpose is to reduce the deficit. Since it was first used in 1980, there have been 20 reconciliation bills enacted into law and four vetoed. Why do it? Budget reconciliation is very attractive because it allows passage of a bill in the Senate with just a simple majority of votes. Republicans hold 52 seats in the Senate, so they could lose three votes and still pass the bill. You know, with Mike Pence being the tiebreaker. So it, it kills off the filibuster, basically, where you have the bill that, you know, 60 votes to move ahead, the, the, which, to me, like, that's... <laughs> like, to me, that's the, uh, the way that the government works, is 52, a simple majority, not, not 60. Uh, drawbacks, because it requires just that majority vote, reconciliation can be used to jam through highly partisan and controversial bills that change policy. An example, the health care law. Obamacare was passed through reconciliation. Correct. Um, there's often disagreement over whether or how the rules of the Senate apply to a reconciliation bill. It could mean life or death for tax reform. One important rule is called the Byrd Rule, named for late Senator Robert C. Byrd, who is a Klansman and a Democrat. And it can kill it can <laughs> kill extraneous items Truth. in the bill that some senators might push to include. So, 
that's what budget reconciliation is. So how does it work? Um, the budget that the Congress agrees on would include instructions on reconciliation. These instructions would say Congress needs to make changes in spending and revenue and how much. Committees in the House and Senate debate and vote, and then that is by a set date. And then they uh, they have – this is the point when specific programs might be targeted for spending cuts or altered. The budget committee in each chamber then picks up those proposals, bundles them together, and if they come from multiple committees and votes – then that's voted on by the House and Senate. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a complicated process, but hell, what is it these days, Harry? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the budget recon reconciliation process, that's when you got the ear full of trying to, like, when they did pass the health care law. Yeah. Because, yeah, it wasn't, it shouldn't have, that's the only way it went through. They yeah. had to shove it through. They had to shove it through. There was no way that it was going to pass. Yeah, there's otherwise. no way it was going to make it. And thank goodness that would have happened, but it did anyways. And, it, and now it's all. And now healthcare is completely screwed up. Well, it, like the individual mandates, one of the most. It is the most un-American bill in my lifetime. Maybe with the exception of the, the Patriot the, Act, the, the Patriot Act, and the defense authorization for Afghanistan, which they've used to invade seven countries. Like yeah. the you know those those bills are just. Like to force Americans to buy a private product, to pass a law saying every Amer it is illegal to be a human being in the United States without a private product. Correct. It's just it's it's the antithesis to our founding mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what our Constitution stands for. So it's just the individual mandate. I think even though the math doesn't work, just on principle, get rid of it. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. un-American. Yeah. It, yeah, on principle doesn't work. Sorry, get rid of it, try to make it work. So, uh, get your finger out of it. Right. Get your finger out of healthcare and watch it flourish. Right. Just watch it, watch it happen. Get your, get your grubby paws out of healthcare like you've done every other time the government has put their fingers in anything. You have ruined, the, ruined everything. Um, just look at the... Uh, whole stupid net neutrality thing their finger has been in telecoms uh, from the 1900 and they just have screwed over everything since then yeah uh do you want to talk about net, net neutrality are you uh prepared i can yeah i'm always re i can talk net neutrality all the time all right uh, yeah so the december 10th i believe they're going to have uh they're going to change the internet back to what it was in 2015 according to creighton harrington yeah he's like to everybody freaking out over all of this net neutrality they're just changing the internet back to what it was pre-2015 which like i'm gonna be honest harry i don't know shit about net neutrality and like every time we talk about it i pretend and i just like i it's really kind of one of those things where, like, I need you to just tell me what to believe. Like, am I for or against net neutrality? Please explain it to me. It is a complicated subject for libertarians or anybody because the simple fact that um, the, the biggest problem is it, the biggest problem is, is the government is, has so many different regulations in this process, so there's this awful um, uh, nacho layer dip of crap, and everyone don't, that wants regulation off of them so they can use the monopoly that the government has given them to make money off it. Right. So, like, basically, so are the regulations strangleholding a lot of different companies? Yeah, they sure are. But once you remove this regulation, the government has this other regulation that gives them the monopoly. Uh, because, okay, slow down. Back up. <laughs> right, okay. okay. Um, Calm yourself. I know you're getting triggered right now. All right, so, net neutrality, um, what these rules are designed to do is to make sure the ISP stays neutral and they keep traffic flowing constantly to people, whatever tier bandwidth that they pay for, they get that on all products. Nothing is faster, nothing is slower. That's basically it for, you know, that's the four dummy, too long, do not read, you know, aspect of it, okay? Uh, so, like, if, I, let's be on Comcast, because Comcast freaking sucks. Um, I don't know, AT&T is pretty bad. AT&T is awful, I really hate AT&T. Yeah. Let's, yeah, okay, we'll do AT&T. AT&T, um, so, we're going to get kicked off air right now. <laughs> so, like, don't talk bad about me. They're on Verizon. <laughs> Suck it. Yeah. Um, AT&T, if let's say majority of AT&T customers love net, uh, Netflix, right? Right. So 80% of them are all going to Netflix, right? AT&T decides to do their own streaming service because they bought DirecTV, right? So right. they're going to slow and make that, uh, Netflix buffer, but hey, our DirecTV on-demand uh, service you can get through us is extra tier. That's moving at blazing high speed. Buy ours. Right. So that uh, And that ticks people off. And I 
Understandable. It, but at the same time, the libertarian eyes are like, well, it's a private company. They should be able to do what they want with it. But the government, the federal government, has given them an unfair advantage in the market because they have given them a monopoly over the telecom systems. Right. The ability to attach to the, the telephone poles, to, do, to put the equipment out to everywhere else. They've got the... Uh, uh, the, the, the tough regulation that even ta- topping to uh, t- tapping to the into the fiber optic channel, but which connects to the internet, which is basically when some people talk about the internet, that's also a multi layer bean dip of crap. Uh, when you see Facebook or the World Wide Web, that's not the that's part of the internet. That's right. not the internet as the end all be all. So don't we do- see like only two percent of the internet essentially because of Google? Not even that. Um, just if you just if you just see the internet just through your web browser, you're only seeing like one two percent. That's what I'm talking well, about. Well, like, isn't the because other ninety eight percent just like child porn and stuff? No, God, no, no. There's so much other stuff like that. Um, if you use um, federated protocols or different stuff like uh, if you uh, if you use like email, right? That's that's pre World Wide Web. You don't need a uh, like a web browser to do uh, email. That's just a protocol through the network. Okay, that's all that is. And there's so many different things like uh, like use groups or BBS. You, those are these things are going through the network that most people don't even access or have like even decide even to touch. That's what's out there in the net. All right, we're we're getting too far off. Am, am, am I am I for or against the Trump administration on doing what the Obama administration did in December? That's like I said. It's a trick you get to make your own choice for it. Black or white? Be- am I for or against Harry? Are you for or against? I hate the FCC, and I hate them to death. Right. And I get the I get the reason why the uh, ISPs and the big telecoms want off underneath that thumb, because they can make a lot more money and can use that money to help spread out the reach. But the problem is they have shown in the past to be bad actors with uh, with the, um, without that over, with that overreach from the FCC. Yeah. They have throttled traffic. Um, we have proven um, so many back in 2015, this classic area that Clayton kept talking about. Sorry, Clayton, but like the like the bullshit where I have unlimited. There's two unlimited plans on AT and T. No, I'm not stuff, talking about that. But that's I'm, different. But, but like, I have two unlimited plans, and then the they brand it as unlimited, and one they throttle you, and you get like barely any internet speed the whole time, mm-hmm. or you can pay like an astronomical amount of money to get the unlimited plus. And then they just throttle you after twenty two mega, like 10, twenty two gigs. Like it, it's marketing, and it's all bullshit. Yeah. And I hate AT and T. And like we had, I had to buy a Verizon hotspot to stream our Facebook Live because the AT and T business connection here sucks so bad. So like the service sucks, the companies suck, they all suck. I hate everything about them. I and and I want freedom. So if I hate the telecoms, and I love freedom, am I for or against net neutrality? I said it's not black and white like that. <sighs> it's not. The one time I tried to be black and white, and you won't be black and white with me. It can, it's be black and white with me, Harry. Because the thing is, right? AT and T has no incentive. AT and T has no incentive, right? To um, to, to boost your bandwidth, they have no incentive to do that. Nothing, nothing. They, right. Nothing. Because you have to take it, and there's no other company that can come in and give it to you either. AT and T, you just have to take it. Right now, um, now, granted, at the other time, if not net neutrality, then you probably does like you can probably benefit like from a, a better Verizon or a Verizon FiOS or Google Fi or something like that to come in it because Google can go uh, or Jeff Bezos decides to bring you um, Amazon Internet and give you high speed Amazon Video Internet that you know like hey I could get you know with your Prime membership you can also get on Amazon Internet, right. Now, now, granted, with the, those regulations, that could sponsor someone like that want to do that because they can go, like, I can make sure you got high-speed internet to all Amazon servers, you know. I'm a, I'll throttle you to anything else. Amazon has been shown to do that by kicking off any other streaming thing off the Amazon site that doesn't stream that most of the Amazon crap. Right. You know, that's why, you can't, that's why it's hard to find Apple TV on Amazon. FYI, Amazon now building a private uh, server for uh, the CIA. That was reported this week. Uh, They're using their servers to build the CIA private servers. First off, eighty percent of the world is probably on Amazon servers. Let's get that. It's Let's, it's literally forty eight percent of the internet. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's we. It's also weird when you you're not on one. Like when you watch Amazon servers go down and your server's still going. And like woohoo! I'm not on Amazon <laughs> server. <laughs> no, Amazon Web Services is how he's the richest man on the earth. Yeah. 
yeah, not Prime. Like, it's not Prime. It's that he controls the internet. A- Amazon just now started making money. It yeah. was like a year ago, I think it was. They finally turned profit. Jeff Bezos, Amazon, Washington Post. Hey, hey, first off, you guys got to understand that Amazon is going to take over the world, okay? Just, I'm for it. You just, I'm, yeah. I'm bring, like, just come in my house, have, fly the little drone here and bring me my things. I, I like, I, like, the thing is, like... Did I you see the, how many ass wipes I have in there? Literally, the, did you go in the bathroom? Did you see how many Cottonelle wipes I have? I'm going to tell you right now, the Amazon, because ecos- of Amazon. The Amazon eco- uh, ecosystem is a lot better than the Apple one. I, I don't. I agree. Their a- Android, their Android tablets, always update. I've got an old Kindle Fire that I leave in the bathroom, mm-hmm. constantly updating. I'm like, wow, this thing updates faster than my Galaxy. I love this, my Kindle. I, Amazon is my favorite company on earth. It surpassed Apple. Yeah, I, I, this I, iOS 11 fiasco. And the little stupid eye thing where it turns mm-hmm. to a wingdings. Yep. Fuck Apple. Yep. Yep. I think this might be like you know, Amazon should come back out with their phone. I think this might be the no, time. No, let's not get that crazy. It should be the time. The, but fire, anyway, the fire Stick is a great little piece of equipment. Fire Stick is badass, you yeah. know? It's I, lo- watching me, but it's yeah, fine. Yeah. And, I did get rid of the Alexa because it is creepy. I don't want that listen to me. How do you know the Fire Stick is listening to you? Well, it's unplugged. But it's sitting there. But, I mean, I. Anyway, back to uh, back to net neutrality. Um, Am I for or against this, Harry? Um, that's what I said. Like, but the, the, it's it's a each, each, each there's no pro and there's no cons. To me personally, since I can't actively prove that the um, currently the telecoms aren't throttling me when I go to different sites, you know, I, I go back to an Ernest Hancock thing. If they can, they will, and if they, <laughs> so they probably are. So. And they can. So what I like the more concentrated is more for people who are getting on the Internet, regardless of these laws, these rules, and getting past the area speed. Um, I, I forgot to write down the guy's name that posted this in the wall group for Wall News of the people out in Detroit. It was a motherboard, motherboard article about the people in Detroit creating their own um, ISP network, basically getting one central location attaching to the um, Internet fiber and then just having that sprawl out using just like Wi-Fi signals through their, the, throughout the um, lower power of Detroit. Right. It was an amazing article watching these people. And I got online and was like looking at everything they'd done. Um, I, I would have did it differently. I don't think I would have did like the 3G connection. I think I, I think I, yeah, I think I probably just used GSM cell phone tower technology mm-hmm. and didn't, and, and, waited for an FCC guy that wanted to drive to the south part of Detroit nah. <laughs> to take out my radio tower. <laughs> but that's me. All right, final net neutrality thoughts. Uh, you let me down. I, I can't. That's the thing. It's kind of hard because, like, I'm not, like, the thing is, I'm so, I can shield myself from all these, like, problems of it. Uh-huh. So it's like, eh. but the other day there, I can see the benefits, I can see the cost of benefits, but the other thing, when it comes down to it, the biggest problem is the FCC regulations on telecoms and creating, you know, um, basically, like, I think it's, it's more for, like, if we could get a hold, it, it, no, it, it, this is not the air like a solution, but just more of, like, the solution for you people who want to play inside the game, is that if the ISPs can talk about how this regulation is it's hindering their growth, then use that same type of t- that same type of growth talk about like wow. Then you, we need to break up the regulation that allows you guys to have whole swaths of countries, the country. Yeah, you know, then find that we need to break you guys up and go in like there need like many many ISPs, many ISPs, many different people to be able to connect to the fiber. And it's pointless the way it's all set up like that because if they don't do that, they, that will happen. That's quickly going to become the uh, the connection to the internet fiber is going to become a utility. Mm. Because status want that. Yeah. They want it to be absolutely. a utility. And I can see it why it could be a utility, but I don't want it to be a utility. I do not want that. It's not like the pipes to your house. You can't you can't have seven different water pipes to your house. I mean you guess you could. I'm sure yes, some, yeah, somebody you can somebody can figure or, it out, but like Or this you know the thing is like but if you had to compete like something like that, let's say um, you have Water X company that did buy the lion rights, like the public road and pays different money to put these money to the like the public roads. Right. They pay a rent to that. And or someone like, I'm just gonna build a water tower in your in your backyard. Right. Yeah, like, uh, uh, I live in an apartment complex. They could go with a different water company, but, I mean... Your water comes from the pool anyway, so they drain it. Exactly right. It's <laughs> from the lake out back. Uh, oh, dear God. Speaking of one of these uh, asshole companies, uh, I really hate at and I, I just think it's the worst company on the planet, and people say, no, Comcast is. 
But uh, AT&T. It's EA, actually. Uh, huh? EA is the worst company. Really? Yeah. Electronic Arts, the awful company. I, I don't know, man. I think at and is pretty, pretty close. Uh, I, I hate them so much. I had... I have internet, I have phone, I have direct. I, I just hate them so much. Uh, the customer experience is awful. Like The reason I have a Verizon hotspot is because AT&T couldn't figure out how to help me buy more stuff from them and spend more money with them. They're just that incompetent. Like It's, it's outrageous. How, like Stop buying things and start fixing how incompetent you are. They want to buy uh, Time Warner Cable. CNN is part of it. And the U.S. Department of Justice has told C- told them that uh, they need to sell CNN. Um, this is something that hasn't happened in 40 years, where the U.S. government has sued, claiming antitrust laws, uh, and that this merger is not in the benefit. Now, you'll remember Obama sued to stop AT&T, AT&T from buying uh, T-Mobile mm-hmm. last year, or two years ago, or last year, I think it was. Um, that's a little different than them buying a cable company, but it's sort of, you know, you can make the case that when they, when they create a narrative that Donald Trump is just being petty and stopping the sale of Time Warner to AT&T over CNN, you can make the case that that's fake news and that there's no evidence to that. But you also can see the other side of it where you go, yeah, but he's that type of guy. Like, it's unconscionable. That a president would use only Richard Nixon. That's the 40 years ago when the Richard Nixon used antitrust laws to F over one of his political enemies. Like, isn't Donald Trump one of those guys? Of course he would. Um, It's not like he used the IRS to go after, like, you know, all their groups and different, you know. Right. It's not like Obama when he's, remember, he used the IRS to go after uh, liberty groups or any uh, conservative and Tea Party groups. Right. So it's... and then, you know, and then Bush used the Patriot Act to go after anyone that looked against him. And then you, uh, let's see, with Clinton, uh, well, Clinton, that's all I've got to say. Uh, the sale of Turner Broadcasting and its crown jewel CNN, which Donald Trump has called a broadcaster of fake news, is one of two potential options put forward by the U.S. Antitrust Authority in order to sign off on the deal that was involved in the talks. Uh, three direct people with direct knowledge of the negotiations say that it is all hinging on uh, CNN being sold. Sounds pretty concrete that Donald Trump's wanting CNN to sell them. No, he has no connection with that. That's fake news. Yeah. Uh, uh, CNN is a crap uh, entertainment company anyways. They're not a news organization. They do about news as much as Trevor Noah does. So, (laughs) sorry. I uh, just thought this was interesting from Politico today. Uh, just uh, actually, no, this is from March 15th. But either way, Senator John McCain accused fellow Senator Rand Paul of doing Russian President Vladimir Putin's bidding after Paul blocked an attempt to vote on a treaty for NATO membership for Montenegro. <laughs> <laughs> it's too old. I, I should have checked the date. Uh, Zimbabwe. You might have heard about Zimbabwe. Just a little bit of what is going on there. Zimbabwe is a country just north of South Africa. It is a country that was uh, infected with apartheid politics where basically white landowners held over from the colonial British days. Uh, You're probably familiar with the apartheid of South Africa and Nelson Mandela. And Mandela was in jail for 30 years, got out, became president. In the 80s, uh, and or was it 90s? Uh, I don't know, but it, it, Mugabe was a freedom fighter against uh, Ian Smith, who was the head of the basically the apartheid government, mm-hmm. um, about as white of a British looking dude as you could possibly imagine. Uh, Mugabe was part of the guerrilla freedom fighters in Zimbabwe, then called, um, man, what was it called? I can't think of it. Right, it's right on the tip of my head Rhodesia. Uh, I remember it. Rhodesia. I kept thinking Rhode Island, and I knew yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it was then Rhodesia, and then uh, in 1980, his party was able to win an, a democratic election and take over and force the British apartheid out. Mm-hmm. And Mugabe was seen as somebody who was a freedom fighter, and the world cheered that an apartheid government had fallen, and a freedom fighter like Mugabe had taken over. And then, over the course of the next decade, decade and a half, he started 
basically stripping all the whites of their land and giving it to military members. He uh, consolidated power by killing off entire tribes of people. Uh, I, I, mm-hmm. it, it was tens of thousands of people that he, he slaughtered. Uh, uh, not only would he kill his political rivals, he would kill their entire village and tribe. And so they, so they would not, not only would he kill them, he'd make sure that power base never rose. So he became just a monster and then was stripped of, you know, all these accolades. Like he became seen, like for those of us who are in our millennial age, like he's always been seen as a dictator, right. a third world dictator. So now he's 93 and people are starting to think about succession. He's still very spry from the video that I've seen of him. But he's he's got this one right hand man named Mwaba Chumbawamba. Um, I don't I, it, like this dude. His name I just can't even like. I'm, I can't even say like white names, let alone like African names. Like I just can't. I, can't, I I'm just so Tim Tim so bad with it, and I apologize. But like Mr. M N A N G A G W A Manungagawa. Yeah. Harry, help me. <laughs> These, help. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Magawa. Mr. Mangawa. Mr. Maga- Miyagi. He's basically like his right-hand henchman, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he's basically more ruthless than uh, Mugabe, and he has been fighting with, uh, with Grace Mugabe, his younger wife. And she has been going into the ruling party and purging a lot of people in the in the ruling party, so she can take over when he dies or when he retires. And Mangawa says, "Hell no! I've been around for thirty years, mm-hmm. and he's rules. You know, he's like the henchman on the right uh, on the right hand of Mugabe. He's like, it's my turn. Yeah. It's my turn to be the the ruler. Yeah, I get and to the, bring it power. Yeah, and then then there's the people in the middle, the all the regular you know Zimbabweans who have dealt with hyperinflation and you know like it you could, they were right taking wheelbarrow yeah wheelbarrows full of cash. I mean the Zimbabwean hyperinflation. I mean any libertarian that's been around for a decade knows about like that as a cautionary tale. Mm-hmm. I mean you've yeah the Zimbabwe dollar everyone would go show you like the thousand the trillion dollar right. number a million dollars Zimbabwe dollars people love to show I think up. I have a Zimbabwean dollar mm. here somewhere, but yeah, I mean it was it was like worth less than what it was printed on. Yeah, yeah, it was awful. So they would print a million dollar bill and then it would be worthless mm-hmm. by the time they got done printing it and distributing it. Mm-hmm. So. So that is what's happening in Zimbabwe. Mugabe, basically there was a military coup. It was a peaceful coup. The military came in and said, uh, no, <laughs> look at me. I am captain now. Was it a coup? They did not self-identify as a coup. <laughs> yeah. am, I, am, I just, uh, yeah. am I just guessing that their intentions? Or? St- stop, uh, stop assuming their military <laughs> <laughs> actions. Yeah, right. their military intentions. It's not a coup. Just coup, half selfies. Yeah, okay, are they or Kelfies? Would it be because they're coup, coup d'état? Kelfies? So, no. Kelfies? No, it, I think it's selfies. Okay, yeah, so yeah. it's just selfies. But they have them attached to their AK 47s, so mm-hmm. it's like it's a bayonet attachment. <laughs> it's like a possible self, attachment. It's, like, it's a possible attachment. It's a selfie stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the military basically says, you know, uh, we're done with this. That's enough of this. Mm-hmm. We're we're because there is uh, there is a meeting of the party coming up, and there in December, and Grace was out of out of the country. Mm-hmm. Man, Manalawia is uh, Manamana is out of town, mm-hmm. and so the military felt like, all right, perfect eh, time, perfect time. Let's perfect. step nope. in, take it over. Turn on the TV Sunday night or the last week at some time. There's a gentleman in a military outfit saying, "Look at me, I am captain now," <laughs> and he he took over. And uh, both Grace has not returned. <laughs> Wrong country to return to. Manamana has returned to to uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, this is probably the most offensive, uh, culturally insensitive breakdown of the Zimbabwe situation of all time, Harry. 
the, right now, the people in Zimbabwe do not care. <laughs> they are ecstatic. They They're, are so happy. Yeah, some of the videos, the some of the like live feeds. Yes. For, like some people's like uh, their Facebooks and Twitters and stuff like that. They're like, Whoa, they're just they, Vice. Vice is on the ground, and this is one of the reasons I like Vice is that Vice is always on the ground in these situations and sends. They post unfiltered. Like it's like you you like HBO runs a Vice news show every day. Excuse me, and I watched it. And, like, they're celebrating in the streets. I saw it on YouTube as well. And, like, they're just really optimistic that this is a moment of freedom. Yeah. And then the, then uh, he goes on, Mugabe goes on TV and basically doesn't resign. And he just was like, yeah, we'll get this all figured out. Don't worry, everybody. And the whole nation's confused, and all the freedom fighters are like, the fuck? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is. I mean, people, there's a real moment of freedom in that, in that country that hopefully they can, uh, they can actually achieve a, a democracy, a, yeah. a republic. Well, do they need the government? Um, <laughs> hopefully, you know, they don't. Hopefully they don't form a government. Hopefully they, you know, they become a beautiful anarchist state. Sure. Show people how it's done. Like it, Somalia? Somalia's not an anarchist state, okay? First off, okay. And, uh, African nations just have a bad reputation, I'm just saying, Harry. They have a bad reputation because for uh, so many different generations they were under, like, colonial rule, and then were given basically 20, uh, 20th century weapons with um, 18th century thinking. Yeah, exactly you know? right. So, like, these people went back right back to the 18th century, like, warlord thinking with 20th century thinking. So what do you think is going to happen? It, all while having all of the natural resources yeah. sold to China, Russia, America, Europe. The there's um, a neo colonialism. Well, that that's has taken the other place. thing is like it also like in, um, but that partnership with China like it see, some people see that as bad, but a lot of the countries are benefiting. They they're using their money from it. Um, they, um, and Africa is not a like terrible. It, not all spots of Africa is that bad. Right. Um, there's a lot of different places in Africa that it's like it, you know it's basically. You know, not, not better than Detroit, right. <laughs> which is not hard. Absolutely, but um, a lot of different. Like, I have no intention currently right now to go to Africa, but I've got a lot of buddies who do, and it's like freaking. Let me warn you, people. If Harry and I mean you, people, if Harry goes to Africa, y'all need to run because <laughs> let me explain Harry's heritage. When they outlawed slavery in England, he moved to America. His family moved to America so they could continue stealing people. For mean, slavery, uh, yeah, that's one. Um, um, or and went to France to like fight England. Uh, <laughs> went to Canada to fight England over taking. <laughs> Long story short, you have no plans to go to Africa. No plans. No plans. Uh, it does look cool. It does look cool. Like, uh, and um, it's how can I put it? It's it's just a different country. It's a different cult. It's a different continent. It's a different culture, uh, and each little spot is different. And the thing is, just like different parts of China or having these small special economic zones, that is slowly happening in Africa, right. especially with China's influence. Um, China showing like some of these like tin pot dictators and these awful like corrupt governments that you know like you know you want to extend your rule, you want power, let them do what they want, but in that city, yeah, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. They'll make money, collect your taxes, and they'll do what you want. It's the only reason China is still like uh, relevant right now. Um, don't forget, like after Mao died, yeah, uh, China was like you know people were starving to death in China. Billions of people, uh, millions of people were dying, you know, and but they just started to do these small like uh, special economic zones like Hong Kong and just started to grow from there. And that's why China is now as a powerhouse. Yeah, they've got tons of these special like, economic special economic zones that the Chinese government just stays out of. Yes, they're still communist China, but they just know like. Like, we're going to leave these little pockets alone yeah. because we need that money. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. And and the same thing with uh, 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 Mugabe. Like he's been uh, like WikiLeaks and all different other people has been exposing some of a lot of the corruption that was going on in that government that also helped spur a lot of these different people mm. into this age because thanks to, for the technological age that they live in and people are are. Uh, with these technological advances from the West coming over into Africa to help show, like, one, they thought they were going to use technology to help rig elections. That turns to bite them in the butt because people use technology to show that. Right. You know, like, and then there's several different, like, uh, economic, uh, different cables to find out, like, Mugabe did have, like, a disease and was using the money to help, like, um, also corrupting, stealing money to help fix that disease, too. Mm. You know, because he had, uh, what was it, testicular, testicular cancer? Testicular cancer. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, neutered Mugabe. Um, you know. He still has a great voice. <laughs> Honestly, Mugabe, I know you retired. You stepped down today. You stepped down at the government. The government's now in, in disarray. But your voice is fantastic. So if you want to be a co-host sometime, maybe just even do voice work. It's probably going to be on the Young Turks. Yeah. <laughs> He's more of a Young Turks person, mm-hmm. to be honest. Maybe you show up on, like, Gavin McInnes or of something. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <then. laughs> All right. So last story tonight, uh, before we do the bonus show. Uh, don't do that. This 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 came out today. The Indiana Attorney General has said that CBD oil is illegal. Now, cannabinoid oil is uh, legal in Indiana now for people who have a very specific type of ep- epilepsy, and they are children. Now, if you remember Addie's story, which was an episode of The Cost, uh, and I don't remember what episode it was, but if you get The Cost podcast feed... You can, uh, Harry's going to look it up. Addie's story was about that. We were talking about the bill to, here, trying to help get it passed. It did pass. Uh, so Addie was able to get CBD oil to help treat herself. It's going to, you're going to, yeah, you're going to have to. Yeah, that's good. Um, but, it, it, so that passed. But here's the problem. They they narrowed the people who can have CBD oil, which is a derivative of cannabis, which is an oil of it, which is um, ba- basically like no THC. Like, you can't get high from CBD oil, as we talked about in that episode. So, we we cannot get high from CBD oil, but we, we, we see the benefits of it. Mm-hmm. So, we have made it legal for a specific very narrow group of people which great it mm-hmm. it is helping a f- friend's daughter like i'm happy that they have access to cbd oil so stores started carrying cbd oil essential oil companies sell it i can get cbd oil at the local fresh time market like th- then they realized oh Everybody has access to CBD oil now. Everybody's buying CBD oil because they're marketing to this group, but everybody else can buy it. So the Indiana State Police and Excise Police started raiding and basically stealing the inventory Mm -hmm. of people who had CBD oil. And we've been waiting for the uh, Attorney General to rule on this. And uh, Curtis Hill who is uh, the Attorney General from Indiana, who has aspirations for higher office, uh, who is no friend of medical marijuana, says that it is, simply put, cannabinoid oil is... Cannabinoidal is a Schedule One controlled substance because marijuana is a Schedule One controlled substance, he wrote in an advisory opinion. Although it is a relatively new phenomenon, after thoroughly trafficking the language of the Indiana law defining marijuana, it is evident that cannabinoid oil is now and historically has been derived from a part of the plant genus cannabis. Uh, He added that at the federal law, the product is illegal as well for human consumption. Only state departments of agriculture and higher education institutes can grow the product under the 2014 Farm Bill. Uh, So if... Lawmakers want this, they have to expand it. So it contains less than 0.3% of THC, the ingredient that gives users their high. Uh, So they stopped seizing products but wanted to return any products until the further lab testing are received and legal analysis pursued. Now, Hill is not incorrect in that it is against the law for people to buy CBD oil that are not under this special protected class. But how are they going to get access to it if it's illegal to be sold in Indiana? Right. This is the problem with with trying to carve out exceptions to freedom. Like, everybody should have access to something that benefits them. Correct. It reduces inflammation. It's extremely beneficial for a lot of different things and a lot of different medical issues. It doesn't get you high. He's just ignorant. And, like, he wrote in uh, November, uh, you know, don't he wrote an op-ed in Indiana at the same time, don't legalize marijuana in Indiana. Um, They're trying to legalize pot. It's a gateway drug. 
Research shows that someone who uses marijuana by the age of 15 is 3.6 times less likely to graduate from high school, 2.3 times less likely to enroll in college, and 3.7 times less likely to get a college degree. Then there's the matter of impaired driving. You know, it, it's it's, uh, it's also marijuana is also linked to crime. Um, mm. You know, it, 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 well, yeah, it's awful. Like you're throwing like useless statistics out there because right. you can use the same thing for milk, um, cheese, right. uh, could beer. Be, could it be that somebody coffee. who uses marijuana at 15 is probably part of an unstable home environment, mm-hmm. and it, that is probably why they end up in more crime-ridden situations, or they're in parts of town where the drug war has decimated their community, yeah. and so they're more likely to turn to crime. So, yeah, yeah. Um, be- because you send excise police in stealing people's inventories and taking people to cages, right? You know, rather than follow the crowd, rather than even flirting with the folly of legalizing mar- marijuana, Indiana lawmakers should stand firm in their resolve to keep our state on a better path. Um, and what path is that? You know, less freedom. Yeah, le- yeah. Less health. Less freedom putting um, cops in danger because they're having to bust marijuana uh, users, you know, right. instead of it going out and busting, you know, real crimes out there. Maybe we can get rid of the drug unit and go and reinstate the uh, stolen vehicle unit here in Indiana. Yeah, right. that's right. Here in Indiana, we don't have a, a stolen vehicles unit. It, yeah, we don't have one. You can steal a car in Indiana. You can follow your police report, but no one's looking for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, but oh, but the DEA and the drug task force full on. The, the FBI was out searching for drugs. Drug dealers are getting the druggies, yeah. but your stolen property, they don't give two craps about. Not at all. Uh, we're gonna do our uh, our bonus episode on talking politics during the holidays. After this, uh, like that one. So, well, by the way, uh, Addie's story was number seven in the cost, or 194 of we li- we are libertarians. All right, cool. So go back in the feed, 194. If you want to hear more about CBD oil, uh, if you want to get that bonus episode, you've got to go give five dollars a month to the Patreon. You get an RSS feed. You get all kinds of bonus content. You get higher quality, commercial free audio. You get uh, you get usually 30 to 90 minutes of extra content. A week. If you love We Are Libertarians, then you want to. That's the best five, ten, twenty-five, or a hundred dollars that you could possibly spend. Forget Christmas presents. Buy yourself a Christmas present and get the gift of more information, more entertainment, more wall. So get that at WeAreLibertarians.com. Uh, we're going to talk again. Surviving the holidays. Uh, just a little chit chat behind the scenes uh, stuff. And uh, shout out to the We Are Libertarians group. I put up a poll. Uh, I, a lot of the content in this was, hey, I put up a poll. What do you want to hear me talk about? What, what's some uncovered stuff that we're not talking a lot about? And I, I found some stuff in there that I liked. One of the top answers was the Air Force pilots drawing a penis in the air. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen this beautiful use of government technology, just Google search Air Force penis. And uh, you will you will find it. Don't do it at work, but it is hilarious. I'm sorry, like uh, like when I was reading the story, I kept like they did it with like an FA-18. Yeah, it's badass. Yeah, it's, it's plane's badass. And but the thing is, my, my brain initially was like, I wonder if you can do that with like an A-10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or an F-4. That'd be awesome. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah, sorry. All right. Cool. All right, thanks everybody for. Oh, uh, final thoughts. How, how dare I? Yeah, final yeah. thoughts. My right. final, yeah, like my final thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, drawing a penis in this guy with an A10. That'd be an, an amazing feat to do um, because you got to get the condensation just right. And so that, uh, that A10 is going to be flying just to get. You know, who's crazy enough to do that? Um, um, so <laughs> the other thing I wanted to go on to uh, is uh, my final thoughts on the. Uh, in, Indiana's a really screwed up state sometimes. Mm-hmm. There's, we. It's crazy how much freedom that you are allowed here to do in Indiana, and then some of the most backass, inane. corrupt, inane government crap happens here. It is, so, um, it is like the whole liquor lobby. You're like, oh, now we're all for Sunday sales, so they can keep cold beer, and they're doing things in the lobby, and they're doing this like the government these private lobby groups came to the decision and they're going to push that to, to our state house. I'm like, what the heck? And it's like, if I don't get cold beer at the grocery store, like, this is it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. 
and it's you know like so like so when people talk about like local politics is like it's very very important to get in your local races and support your you know if you want to you know get into that you know I can see it yeah it makes sense I still get cold beer on Sunday because they you know, they allow breweries to get cold beer and if sure. you go to local um, Indiana distillers you can get local booze but yeah so yeah, those are my thoughts my final thought is uh, Trump already kind of. Roundabout endorse Roy Moore, but look for a full-throated endorsement from Trump for Roy Moore next week, because they've got to pass this bill and this this Senate tax bill, and over the next couple of weeks, he's not going to want the discussion to be about basically him and his rich buddies getting a tax cut. So he's going to do something to distract the population from the real story of the tax uh, tax bill and endorse Roy Moore, maybe even fly down to Alabama and put his arm around him uh, and uh, just put him over the finish line because I think he wants that distraction. Uh, the holiday will kind of lull everybody. Nobody will talk. You know, People will be paying attention to the news. Then we get back to work Monday or Tuesday. I think Roy Moore is great. So that's my prediction. Be watching out for it. Uh, all right, guys, thanks so much for joining us here on this episode of We're Libertarians. Hope you learned a lot. If you love this show, if you love what you've learned, if you learned one thing, if you understood one thing better, tell your friends, post it, and say, hey, I learned something about X, or I really like this show because these guys are funny, mm-hmm. or that was the most offensive uh, breakdown of Zimbabwe I've ever heard. Yeah. Maybe not that one. I don't want to go to prison or anything. You can go to prison for, like, hate speech now, right? Yeah, yeah, if you're white, especially in Canada, you, I, I can, you can. Well, I, yeah, yeah, more are you. Yeah. You just kicked me out again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians, and we'll see you next week. Until then, be good to each other. Did you do the Patreon shout out?